SIBO stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It's a very common disease and I'm really excited to talk about it and teach you what it is. Defining SIBO is not an easy task because it's an evolving field. However, simply put, SIBO is an overgrowth or excess colonization of colonic type bacteria in the small bowel where it doesn't really belong. There are a couple of reasons why SIBO can occur. I'm gonna give you two common reasons. Number one, dysmotility of the bowel or a small moving bowel. Number two, if the stomach pH is too high. Normally, we have hundreds of thousands of proton pumps that produce hydrochloric acid in the stomach to keep the pH low at about two. If you're on medicines such as PPI medicines, which disrupts that process, you can have more colonization of bacteria in the small bowel. The way we define SIBO is if you took an aspirate of the juices inside the small bowel and you had more than 100,000 colony forming units per ml of that aspirate, that's called SIBO. Normally, the gut um, is a very long, tortuous place. From mouth to anus, there are supposed to be 100 trillion gut microbiome or organisms living in our body. The majority of this biome resides in the large bowel. However, if there's colonization or overgrowth of bacteria in the small bowel, that leads to SIBO. SIBO is an extremely uncomfortable problem to have. It causes excessive bloating and gas where people feel pregnant. So you can't blame patients uh, for going on the internet trying to find answers. Unfortunately, a lot of the answers they find is incorrect. And the advice they're getting is incorrect. A few very famous, well-known vegans recently came out and they said they had SIBO and their practitioners told them they should eat fish and eggs. So that brings us to the next point. What actually causes SIBO? Does a whole food plant-based diet cause SIBO? The answer is no. So I will explain to you, however, what does. And by the way, SIBO is not a disease exclusive to vegans. So many people have SIBO. It's a very common disease. I see about 10 patients every day who would qualify for SIBO. Um, they say that there's up to 22% of the healthy population out there uh, who could have SIBO. About 66% of patients with celiac disease have SIBO and up to about 70% of patients with IBS um, have SIBO. So it's very common, it's not exclusive to vegans and that is an important thing to remember. But what really causes SIBO? Well, here are some causes. These are uh, some of the common causes. Dysmotility or problems with the bowel where the bowel doesn't squeeze very well, the motor complexes don't work, and the bowel is slow. Uh, people with constipation commonly have um, dysmotility and they get SIBO. Um, hypochlorhydria, meaning uh, if you're on a PPI medicine that reduces the stomach acid. Um, abnormal anatomy, let me show you what that means. Some patients have had ileocecectomy, where their ileocecal valve is missing and this bacteria can, um, so basically if this uh, valve is missing, the bacteria can uh, find its way into the small bowel and go upwards instead of forward and uh, they could get SIBO. Immune deficiency disorders such as HIV, small bowel diseases like inflammatory bowel disease and celiac disease, uh, chronic pancreatitis, narcotic drug use, whether these are narcotics that doctors give you for back pain or it's IV drugs that are injected in the vein, it doesn't matter. That causes uh, slowing down of the bowel and stasis, and that could cause a SIBO. Um, Chronic liver disease, like cirrhosis, is one of the biggest causes. Metabolic disorders like diabetes, like obesity, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease are some of the causes. 
Irritable bowel syndrome is one of the causes and malnutrition is another cause. So I guess the take home message is, is that number one, SIBO is an overgrowth or colonization of the bacteria colonic type in the small bowel where it doesn't belong. Number two, it's really uncomfortable. And number three, it's not a disease exclusive to vegans. Anybody could uh, have it. It's very common. And the treatment is not to reduce the fiber. That's just Band-Aid. You get a little less bloated that day if you ate less fiber, but it doesn't treat SIBO. The treatment is, it's not easy, uh, but it's doable. Uh, but you have to talk to an expert who understands how to treat SIBO. Uh, so get the appropriate help. Don't try to cut out the fiber out of your diet and eat fish and eggs, which won't help.